Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. Today we're going to have a little talk about servos. And I'm going to show you how you might not be getting the performance you think you're getting when you buy a servo. Before we get started, I need to let you know this video is sponsored by KST. I'd like to say thank you to KST for sending these servos out. These KST 915 V2s and the BLS 805X will be the servos used in my next helicopter build. If you're not a helicopter flyer, don't worry. Everything we're going to talk about today is applicable across the board no matter what type of platform you fly as long as it needs servos. So these KST-915 servos, I went through a decision making process when I bought my last set for my Kraken and I wanted to share a little bit about that process with you because when you go out to the web and you look at servos, it can be very challenging to figure out. I mean, the obvious stuff, the digital, the metal case, the metal gears, uh, the price obviously, those are all things that are kind of obvious. They make a lot of sense. You can't take a standard size servo and stuff it in, in a micro slot, right? That just doesn't make any sense. You're going to have weight problems and, and frame problems and all of that. So those basic factors are pretty easy to understand and you can sort those out on your own. What I wanted to do is cover a little bit of material about the specifications and show you how I arrived at my decision to start using KST servos. And I'll tell you this. In all of my helicopters, long before I had any connection with KST, I've been using and selecting KST servos. It's just the way it worked out because of the type of analysis that I do before I make a purchasing decision. So we're going to get into that today. But before we do, before we get into the analysis, I wanted to talk a little bit about torque and speed and give you guys some information around performance that you may not be aware of. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen. The main thing I wanted to accomplish today is give you guys a methodology for selecting a servo. That's the main goal today is to give you a method because when you go out there and look at servos, it can be very confusing. You have all these different numbers. How do you evaluate them and determine which one is the best right, for your application? So what I did is I made this little spreadsheet and I will put a link to the spreadsheet in the description so you can download it and use it yourself. In my spreadsheet, I went ahead and listed some very common servos that would be workable in the airframe that I was building at the time, which was the Kraken. And all I did is I just went out and tracked the specs. Now, one servo I have on the screen is a very cheap and basic servo by Hobby King. It's called an HXT 5010. And you can see on the price tag on this one, it's only $5.60. So if you need a real cheap kind of okay servo, these are pretty decent for the money if you're flying a basic sport plane. I put it on there just for a frame of reference though. It's not really applicable for a helicopter. The next set of servos you'll see are a couple of Savok servos and then some KST, Torque, MKS, X, and Expert. Let's start talking about the specifications. You'll see the first column says Torque L and the next column says Torque H. And what that means is I'm documenting the torque specification provided by the manufacturer at low voltage. So this number right here, 4.8, is a reference to voltage. That's 4.8 volts. What the manufacturer is telling us here is this servo produces 5.5 kilograms of torque at one centimeter from the pivot point and 4.8 volts. On this servo, the low voltage mark indicated by the manufacturer is 6 volts, and that servo at 6 volts produces a whopping 40 kilograms. That's a lot. That's a heavy duty servo right there. And then this next Savok servo shows 22 kilograms at 6 volts and so on. So I'm not going to read every single one of these, but the first thing I did is document the torque on the low end. Okay, that's what this column represents is the torque on the low end. The next thing I did is document the servo torque on the high end. Same rule applies. You simply grab the torque value at the high end voltage specification listed by the manufacturer. That's what I have in this column. I did the same thing for speed on the low end and speed on the high end. The next thing I did was document my price. I added in the weight of the servo because for a lot of applications you might need to know that so you understand what kind of weight you're putting in. And then finally we've got the price per kilogram of torque and I use the high end of torque. So the formula here simply takes the price and divides it out by the high torque value. In this case it's 85 divided by 25 and that gives me a value of $3.4 per kilogram of torque. And then finally, the last thing I did was I sorted on this value because to me, I'm using this as an efficiency guide to tell me what the best deal is on the servo. 
So you'll notice the rows of this chart are sorted based on price. They start at a low of 86 cents on that HXT 5010, and they end at $9.46 per kilogram of torque for this DS215MG, also by KST. Now that you understand the specifications we're going to examine and how we're going to judge the price efficiency for a servo, let's talk about why you may not be getting the performance you think you're getting out of your servos. When you see a number like 25 kilograms dash CM, what they're saying is that's the amount of torque at one centimeter. So I've drawn a little diagram to give you an idea what that looks like. You can see from the pivot point, one centimeter on this particular KST servo is the first hole. So what that means is at one centimeter, I am getting the full 25 kilograms of torque on this servo. The problem is not that first hole. The problem is what happens if you're not using the first hole. If you go all the way out to two centimeters, notice that the torque value is actually cut in half. When you double the distance from the pivot based on the rating to the outer hole, you actually cut the torque value in half. I'll cover the math on that in just a second. I wanted to show you this because you'll notice in the Kraken manual, they tell you to put the ball link at 17 to 18 millimeters. So what that means is you're losing some torque. Now let's go through the math. Let me show you the math. Here are a couple of calculators I found out there on the web to help you calculate what torque you're actually getting out of your servos. So here's, here's the way this works out. In this particular calculator, you can say the distance, or R, is one centimeter. That's the book value. So at one centimeter, we get 35 kilograms of torque, which results in 343 newtons. On this calculator, I show you how to convert newtons back to kilograms, and you can see that we're at 34.97. So if you round that up, that means we're getting 35 kilograms. So this checks, right? I'm, I'm just checking my work here. Now, if we take that centimeter and convert it from one centimeter to, say, two, remember what I said when you double your distance from the pivot point, notice our force number is 343. Three. When I switch from one to two, watch that force number. We went from 343 to 171. So if I plug that value in 171, you can see that our, our kilogram value went from 35 to 17. That's half. Now, in the case of the Kraken, if you look at the manual here, where they recommend 17 to 18 millimeters, if you plug in 1.7 centimeters, we get 201 newton meters. So let's plug that into the calculator, and you'll see that instead of getting 25 kilograms, we're getting 20 kilograms. That happens because we move the ball link out a full seven millimeters. That means we lose a little bit of pushing power on that servo arm. You get more torque the closer you get to the pivot point. If you like messing with this type of thing, here's the formula if you like to calculate your own. But wait, there's more. In addition to changing your torque, you also change your speed. I'm gonna show you a very simple formula that shows you how to calculate linear speed for a circle. This is a real simple diagram that shows a radius. So if you take a radius from the center of the circle out to the circumference and take that radius and then lay it on the circumference itself, that becomes what's called a radian. So in this diagram, let's just assume this radius has a value of 10. Let's just say it has a value of 10. And for the time, you notice on the formula it says time elapsed here. We'll just use one second. So when I do my math, I'm gonna take my distance traveled. Remember the radian is equal to the radius. It's the same, it's 10, right? The value is 10. So we're gonna take the distance traveled of 10 and we're gonna divide it by one and that gives us a speed of 10. Now, if we take our radius and cut it in half and make it five, then our radian also becomes five. So we'll take that distance traveled five, divide it by one second, and that gives us a speed of five. So all I'm trying to do here is show you that as you move farther from the center, if you double your distance from the center point or the pivot point, you double your speed. We went from a speed of five to a speed of 10, right? That's a, you can go, go get into the theory all you want here, but I'm just showing you the math. The point here is that as you move your ball out from the pivot point, you increase your speed. That's the main thing to understand. Now that you have an understanding of how torque is changed as you move your ball out on the servo arm, you might have a very different point of view on what kind of servos you want to put in your aircraft, whether it's a fixed wing or a helicopter. And the other thing to understand is that you can see this value of 25.0 kg CM, and that's probably a very accurate number from the manufacturer, but 
as I showed you with the math example, I'm not going to get 25 kilograms on that Kraken. I'm only going to get 20. That math should help you figure out what the best servo choice is for your application. In the case of the Kraken, where I had the option of running either standard or mini, if I had used the KST mini servo, which looks like a strong servo at 13.5 grams, when we move that ball out from the center to 17 millimeters, we're not actually getting 13.5 kilograms. We're only getting 9.45 kilograms. So the thing is just understand it and use that in your evaluation process. The very last thing I want to do is hit on this concept of efficiency. You might be looking at my dollar per kilogram efficiency column and saying, hey, John, why didn't you go with the Savox servo at $2.83 per kilogram? And the reason is because that torque rating at 65 kilograms is about four and a half times what SAB recommends when you go with the Mini. And they do say a Mini is an acceptable servo on this airframe. So for me, 65 kilograms is overkill, not to mention the fact they're $184 per servo. You need three of those, that starts to get expensive real fast. So the next servo in terms of efficiency that looked like it was in the ballpark for me was the KST BLS 915 V2. I looked at that one and that came out to $3.40. It has a torque rating that fits within what SAB recommends for the Kraken, and it's a more manageable $85 per servo. There are some other good KST options like the 815 V2. That one's only slightly weaker at 8.4 volts, uh, but it's not quite as efficient on the dollar per kilogram scale. There's one other thing I want to point out on the servo chart in case you're eagle-eyed and you caught this, and that's this thing. You might look at this and say, well, John, you have a KST BLS 805. That's this one right here. This is a tail servo, and that's got a ridiculous dollar per kilogram efficiency rating. Well, the reason is because it's a tail servo. So in this, in a tail servo, what they're doing is they give up torque. Look at the torque value, 7.5 kilograms of torque at 8.4 volts. That's way less than the cyclic servo. So we're all the way down at 7.5 kilograms, but look at the speed. The speed is 0.039 per 60 degrees at 8.4 seconds, which is almost twice as fast as the cyclic servos. So on a tail servo, you're giving up torque, which doesn't bode well in the dollar per kilogram of torque evaluation, but what you are getting is speed. So instead of evaluating this servo for torque, you'd wanna evaluate it for speed. All right, guys, that's about all I've got. I really just wanted to give you a way to kind of evaluate because when you go out there and look at all these websites and you look at all these numbers, it can be very challenging. And if you go back and forth and back and forth, you say, well, which one's better? Which one's stronger? You know, which one should I get? It can be very challenging to do. So by taking a very simple spreadsheet like the one I have here, you can put all of your data in it and evaluate it and come up with a reasonable answer on why you want to pick a servo. For me, the KST servos wind up being efficient from a cost per kilogram perspective. At $3.40, this 915 V2 is the best option on the plate. And I can see that because this is what the mass shows me. By the way, I also want to point out these are list prices, not sale prices. You can't go off sale prices because everybody's always got a deal. So I had to use list pricing. Uh, of course, use the pricing that you can get for the servo at the time in your evaluation. That makes the most sense. I just wanted to use list pricing to keep the playing field level. I hope this video sheds a little light on servo performance so you have an idea now of exactly how your servo is gonna perform in your application and how to evaluate servos for purchase. If you like this kind of material, make sure you hit the subscription button down below and the notification bell so you know when new videos hit the channel. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy.